Hey guys, what's up? It's Sean, Autotopia LA. Before we jump in with the video with my friend Eric here, I just want to make a mention again that the new stuff is up on the store. I thought we'd be sold out by now. There's still some stuff. So atlamerch.com if you want to go buy our stuff. The other thing I want to mention is my friend's Auto Revolution. If you're looking for another interesting, unique YouTube channel, go check out Auto Revolution. With that said, we're back here with my friend Eric at West Coast Exotics. If you guys didn't see it before, we shot his extraordinary bare metal C10, yeah, single times. turbo, super, <laughs> super fun video. Mild smoke show. <laughs> I mean, just, dude. Good time. Jesus Christ, I get behind him. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, dude. <laughs> I remember when we were here before, you know, you showed us this and for one, it's the only Volvo I've ever seen that's sexy in the sense that like this roof line on yeah. it is just extraordinary. But then you pop the hood and it was like, okay, dude, so Different we really story. need to shoot this thing because it's not, like I said, it's not grandpa's that's Volvo. That's for sure, you know? that's it, for it, sure. Because I don't know Volvo in the yeah. slightest, dude. What model is this? So in the um, early 80s, they made, the common car was a 240, the 240 model, and then they made a 242, which was a two-door, and a 244, the four-door, and 245 was right. a wagon. In the early 80s, they made a number of these that were done by a company in Italy uh, by the name of Bertone. Sure. And Bertone, they, they, sure. they did some other, man, you know, some other design for other manufacturers. Right. This car, um, tied together with Volvo, did a Bertone version with a shortened roof. So this is essentially like a Volvo 242, a regular two-door, with a chopped down roof that Bertone designed it and you know, designed it. the windows and did the whole thing in the back. So got that's it. why you probably haven't seen it. That makes before. so much sense. Cause yeah. you know what, let's be honest. It's got Italian sex appeal, right? It's yeah. not the Swedish box, right? I mean, it's just not, and it's cool. Know? Cause it, you know, they didn't make a lot of them. These all had vinyl roofs. So it was a black, it was a gold car with a black vinyl roof. That's what it was. Originally? And it had a Volvo V6. So it didn't it. quite have the same appeal that it does today, but yeah. still that whole roof line and the design that Bertone did with Volvo made it, you know, made it pretty cool for a Volvo. The other thing I remember briefly was, was something about your dad yeah. associated with this car. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, very much. We grew up in Massachusetts. My dad grew up in Boston and he was, uh, you know, working on Volvos as a kid. And uh, as I came into life, uh, we, we started a Volvo dealership. Like when I got out of college, we got very attached to Volvos and my first race car I ever built was a Volvo with my dad. But this car in particular was a car that my dad uh, probably bought 20 something years ago as a stock Volvo Bertone, rust free, perfect shell. So he stripped all the vinyl roof off and stripped the all gold paint off and painted it all this late model black metallic. He put a Grand National Turbo V6 in it. He did suspension. A lot of the same look you see here is kind of how he had it. The big difference is what today's motor is versus what he had. It's very sentimental to me. I mean, my dad, right. you know, is not very active these days. And so the fact that he stripped this to bare metal and built it up and built the interior, Alcantara interior, and then at the time had a super cool, big turbo, you know, Grand National yeah, Buick V6. Yeah, 3.6, 3.8, Yeah, 3.8, I think they were yeah, automatic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, And he put a Ford rear end in it. So here we, so we fast forward. My dad's not driving much. And I go, dad, whatever you do, you're not gonna sell that car. If you, like, I want that car. Gotcha. So I got the car back from him probably seven or eight years ago. And I drove it around with the V6 and it was cool and it's cool. And I'm thinking yeah. to myself, man, if I'm gonna keep this car forever, which I'm going to, let's let's really step up the motor game. And it's okay. gotta have a manual too. Now just so you guys understand, if you haven't seen the video on Eric's C10, in that video, we give a little background, but you know, I mean, a lot of years of racing yeah. and racing at a high level. I mean, you were a GM factory driver, yeah. as I remember. Yep. You won Petit Le Mans, if I remember correctly. Yeah. If I remember correctly, also the last year of racing, you won the DPI. I started racing Volvos, like I said, almost 30 years ago with my dad, Jeez, right? Dude. And then we got, of course, one of my Camaros that was in late 90s, but, you know, Corvettes all the way up into Daytona prototypes at, you know, Race Daytona and won a championship in 16 with a Corvette prototype. And then, and then 18, you're referring to, won the championship in DPI in the IMSA class with Felipe Nasser. So, and then, you know, of course, like we won Sebring 12 hour, we won Petit Le Mans, we won so some, crazy. you know, won some big races. I mean, I think arguably there's only a couple of levels of racing that would go above that prototype category. Right. Formula One, perhaps Indy, Indy would be considered a, a slightly yeah. higher category, but yeah. 
it's one of the highest forms of a motorsport. big deal, especially, uh, you know, I think for the prototypes, if anybody's watching these days with IMSA, the GTP class is now the new class of kind of DPI, same similar chassis. Yes. But, but I mean, that whole era of sports car racing is coming on strong. And the cars are unbelievable. I mean, it's like an Indy car with a body on it, essentially. Yeah, totally. Super fast, big downforce, big power. Yeah. I'm very fortunate to win championships and big races. Yeah, and dude. This I is mean, my retirement, right? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I love it. I love what it. What do I do like after racing? Your inventory here, and I know you're like down on inventory, from, on what, inventory. from what we saw last yeah. time. Yeah. But you know, you got little cars like a couple of 765 LTs sitting yeah. back here. <laughs> you got a row of Porsche Dream over here. Yeah, One of my favorite of cars, cars, the Nismo over here. Yeah. I mean, super cool. Exceptional yeah. car, you yeah, know. Yeah, I mean, we typically have, you know, West Coast Exotic Cars, we have give or take 100, 110 cars usually in inventory. So, yeah. all right, so we're going to get back to this one because we talked about motor. And you guys know us well enough. There's no way, I don't even care, even with the Grand National engine yeah. in here before, there's no way in hell we'd be shooting this six cylinder single right. turbo car. It just yeah. wouldn't have got my blood pump. Right. So let's pop the hood. All right, let's, let's We're going to let you guys under the hood here, which is <laughs> just so bitching, right? And, it's and so you can't, good. It, the, the best thing about this is I even left the stock Volvo hood. And if you look at it like this, you'd have no idea. I didn't, I didn't, you'll, you'll see the motor that I chose and the, and the height of it and the reason why I wanted it to be like, oh, we're like, what, what does this I thing mean, have I mean, dude, it's there? so damn sleeper yeah, looking right. until I'm sure you, you yeah. turn the key on and all of a yeah. sudden it's like, that ain't grandpa's <laughs> Volvo, no way. Just like it was designed, so, right? So bitch, and I just absolutely <laughs> love. So LT4, you but the know, Corvette LT4, because I had the ZL1 Camaro, which was yeah. a wet sump car. This is a dry sump Correct. car. Correct. So the LT, the supercharged LT4, they made them both ways. You know, the, the Corvettes had the dry sump motor and the, right. the Camaros and the Cadillac CTSVs all had a wet sump motor. Right. So with this, I was really big on this thing fitting in this area. Mm -hmm. So in order to use the Volvo cross member and to make it fit under the stock Volvo hood, I needed it to be as short as possible. So no oil pan, dry sump. You spend a little more money, you gotta do more design, you gotta build a dry sump tank. And mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you know, it makes for a great package and everything fits right in there. It is amazing that it fits in. And with that supercharger, you're right, it still gives you the clearance up top. Yeah. I was talking with Sean earlier, Sean from SoCal, who we just shot the orange Chevelle with Yeah, so SoCal Hot Rods and, and, did all this work. Yeah, These and he was unbelievably telling me the good. amount of work just to create your motor mounts here. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like, oh, just bolt the shit in and call it a day, but <laughs> not even close. Not even close, right? No, no. It, I mean, those guys, you know, Sean and his son Dusty spent countless hours putting this thing together, yeah. right? So, yeah. and, and everything, the cooling and the intercooler and mm -hmm. the dry sump and just all that stuff. And I yeah, had to have even, a manual. It's the epitome of hot rod, right. in my opinion. Right. It, it, it really is. It's pretty stock. I mean, we, we've done just a mild tune on it, but with the open exhaust and the different air intake and a few things, it probably makes 670, something like that now. Yeah, yeah. It's easy to make even more power with these. But oh, God, yeah. 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 But now, you were saying your dad had done some suspension work on the car. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, the stance is, like, right. so on point. Right. What what has been done? Do you... So he did full coilovers all the way around. It still has the factory Volvo control arms, but he took them apart and boxed the factory control arms, did different heim joints, coilovers, different shocks, adjustable ride height now. You know, he put the four rear end in it when he did the V6 conversion. And four nine just, inch back there? It's, just, it's smaller, I think it's an 88, something like smaller okay. than a nine okay. inch. So then we did a new drive shaft and we put the beefed up T56 trans in this as well, the stronger gears. But I had to use a T56 because the, the TR6060, the later one is mm. so big, it wouldn't fit in the tunnel. Oh really? Because right? the thing's designed for a little tiny Volvo trans. So with this T56, you didn't have to cut up the tunnel at all? No, very little massaging on the tunnel. So I think at some point, you know, we'll probably do a pulley, we'll probably do some E85, we'll get into stuff like that. I also yeah. like your idea, you know, we talked about it off camera, but you want to look at possibly adding some flares, widening yeah. the cars yeah. so you can get more tire underneath, right? Yeah, for sure, for sure. This is kind of the same appearance and wheels and tires that my, the way my dad set it up years ago. Yeah. So this has got 17 inch wheels and tires on it. You know, we'll get into probably a 19 or a 20. Mm -hmm. We'll cut, we'll flare out the front wheels. We're going to cut into the quarter panels, flare out the back. I mean, I still want to have it have the same look, but it, it it needs a beefier tire on it I'm for with sure. You. But the exterior is going to be a bit of a project. So yeah, yeah, I'm excited yeah, to show you that the next round. Those guys over at SoCal, they do some really nice work. They do. Being yeah. over at their shop today and seeing not only the Chevelle we shot, but other projects that they have mm -hmm. at play right now, it's yeah. it's it's impressive they what they're doing. Cool. You know, you guys, we were talking about it off camera about how you being a pro race car driver and you were saying, you know to get the correct seating position on a race car, you'd be yeah. sitting in the shop for two, three days, yep. hours at a time sitting in the seat to make sure 
your ergonomics Everything. are perfect so you yep. can focus on driving. Yep, absolutely. Right? Yeah, I'm really meticulous about yeah. how they drive, you know, everything, the brake pedal feel, the gas pedal feel. I've had yep. Sean change the springs on the gas pedal. You know, we're always tweaking yep. it. There's very few people that dial in all the rest of that stuff. I agree, really man. Really get it working. Like you said, the stiffness of the pedal, you yep. wanting it a little less stiff, yep. but you also wanted to move the pedals. Yep. yep. Steering, move it down. Okay, now move it back up. Okay, we're almost there. Now we gotta right. move it back down a little bit. <laughs> right. I mean, it's like, <laughs> yeah. we probably had four different shifters in this thing so far but i get it dude yeah. given that i mean obviously you drive a lot of these kind of cars which ergonomics are pretty damn on point on pretty decent yeah. for, for yeah. the most part you yeah. know and when you start digging into customs i agree with you oftentimes it's let's make it look really bitching and yeah. i'm okay the way it drives i don't mind that the steering wheel's over here right. or i don't mind that's really hard to get the clutch or whatever it might be yeah you know? some but people just deal with it as far as uh, brakes go, is it still what came with the Volvo? No. So these brakes are from a later model Volvo. They made a Volvo R model, and that's they're basically like a Brembo brake, and then we, we put a two-piece uh, brake rotor on there. So it's got upgraded brakes already. I think when we go to the bigger wheel and tire package, we'll probably go even a little bit bigger on the brake. Sure. But, but yeah, I mean, considering, you know, my dad painted this thing or had it painted, geez, probably 15 or 18 years ago. Oh, it's still geez, pretty dude. decent. It looks really you know? good. Especially, yeah, yeah. it's not painted that long ago and driven in California. It was in Massachusetts, right? It was right? in Massachusetts, still yeah. There. Of course, yeah, he just drove in the summers, that type of thing. This yeah. car hasn't seen winters. It doesn't have any rust. I mean, these old Volvos like this are mostly all rusted out. I'd you imagine know? they so, are, yeah. yeah. But, so 17-inch uh, wheels, do you know what your tire sizes are? This just has like a 245 all the way around. That's it. It's crazy. Oh, my yeah. God. And it spins the tires pretty good right now. I mean, <laughs> come on, dude. With 650-plus <laughs> horsepower, i got to imagine, yeah. you know? So is it still stock LT4 header at all, or no? Is it no, all... we couldn't use any of the stock stuff. Because of it's the fitment in so here. It's just so tight, and we had to hand make all the headers and all the tubes, and I mean, it took weeks to get the exhaust right. Is that all Sean yeah. and his guys hand make? I had another stuff? guy. I had another guy make up the headers, and then Sean's guys finished the rest of the system. Got it. It's pretty loud the way it is now. Yeah, but, it is. You know, with all these late model cars that we get in, a lot of people put aftermarket exhausts on a McLaren or a Porsche or mm -hmm. something. Sure. So I've got a lot of stock exhaust systems with the factory valves, the butterflies to open and close them. So we're gonna pick an exhaust that I have in the back and Sean and I are gonna build something cool in the back so that we can kind of- you're gonna make it where it has an open yes. close valve on yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we make it quiet or not, kind of like a late model car. That's a slick idea. Yeah, kind of cool. Bitching seats, dude. Yeah, like I said, we you know we cut down the center and we're, we've been playing around with the spacing of the seat, but it's probably three or four inches lower than it would be in a, in a stock Volvo. But Is it really? We got low? Sparkle Alcantara seats. So my dad, back in the day, got rolls of Alcantara material from Sparco, took the stock seats out, took the leather off, and wrapped them all in the Alcantara. Those are the stock seats. These are the stock door panels wrapped in, in Alcantara. So he took all the leather off and wrapped them. You know, of I course, mean, we've done some stereo dramatically stuff. dramatically changing the look, yeah. right? Out yeah. in the Alcantara. You know, more recently, Sean's guys, we just got that Motec dash going as well. Is it? I just want to go ignition yeah. on just yeah, to for see sure. what it looks like yeah. here. You, know, you can change the, the look of it. There's a bunch of different programs you can put in, depending on what style, if you want the tactical left and right, whatever you want to do. So, you know, we took out all the stock gauges, you know, I had all the analog gauges in there. We cut all those out, removed everything and built that whole dash. I mean, dude, it looks like it's back. Right, that was the idea. I said, Sean, we really need to spend some time. We put the, the stock headlight switch back in the panel. We put Ooh. some blinker things in there. And like, you know, like I said, we've tried four or five different shifters just to get the distance and the height right. The whole steering column is lowered probably an inch and a half from stock. You lower the seat. Because you lower the, the seat, you got to bring all yeah, this down, otherwise down, you're right. reaching up for yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. My goal is that we get this thing dialed in just like my truck and, you, you know, we jump in it and go for an hour or two cruise to some show or whatever, and it's mm -hmm. all got to work. Yeah. Like I had the AC on the other day, AC blows cold in this, you know, same as a truck. No, it's not. Is it still stock Volvo AC, or did you have to go out? All the AC, st all the AC stuff on the engine is all GM. Right. But we've still used the the internals. You know, the the heater core, all that stuff is all the same from Volvo. Sean told me when you first said about this Volvo idea, he's like, hey, yeah, I mean, I guess, I, yeah, sure, a Volvo. And he said, yeah, I want to do an LT4. He's like, yeah, let's do this. I'm in. And like, <laughs> yeah. As soon as you said LT4, he said right. he was all over it. But oh yeah, for sure. It was real fun talking with him about 
He said, I wish you could actually see the motor mounts we did because they're all dimple dyed yeah. and like really beautiful pieces. We even powder coated them like in silver so you could see them a little bit different than the black, but yeah. they're hard to see in there. But he, those guys spent a lot of time getting yeah. it all in there, getting it all to work. That whole sleeper concept is, is here. It's so. so slick, man. Yeah. You know, it's an old Volvo, but I want it to be pretty modern. Hence the Del T4, hence the Motec Dash, the stereo, yeah. you know, it's like it all modern stuff, but. yeah. I love the idea that you're not going to see another one of these. There are a number of people that have put V8s in Volvos. It's not the first build like that. Right. Nobody's done an LT4. Nobody's done it with the Bertone model. So yeah. you probably won't see another one of these. A little I mean, it's better rare look. that you, tell, you, you look at a Volvo and you go, that's sexy. <laughs> right, right. This is sexy. Yeah. Like even, cool. I mean, honestly, even yeah. without the LT4 and all right. the other elements, just yeah. the... Just the pure exterior of this, yeah. this roof line just really, really brings this up. car to life. Yeah, yeah. yeah and definitely. my dad did the headlights and the, the hood and stuff is from the European Volvo model. So it's a little sleeker, a little bit different look. So it's all, you know, tastefully done. And of course, it's, you know, it sounds wild. Yeah, awesome. Everybody looks at it, but then when you fire it up, that's when it all changes. Oh, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, which y'all are going to. I mean, you know us well enough. We would not be shooting a freaking <laughs> right. Volvo. Like, right. just wouldn't be doing it. Part of me today was going, we're driving all the way to Temecula to shoot a Volvo. Volvo. What are we doing? Yeah. <laughs> it does have that LT4. Yeah. Let's get our cameras in here. and Yeah, for sure. Go for a little cruise. Let the race car driver yeah, with the 650 go. horsepower right. scare the piss out of old Sean here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So funny. I mean, it is. <laughs> Seating position's cool, dude. I like. Yeah, I like how down. much down you yeah, are. You got the I'm side still, protection here. I'm still kind of shimming it and adjusting it, and then we keep we put washers and like oh, move it around, and then at some point I'll make spa proper spacers and we'll bolt it. You know, we'll get it where it is. To where but, you fix it. Yeah, in but it's place. like you know, like two inches lower than stock. You know. Yeah. On this side, the dash is cool for me. On that side, yeah. is it? Is it? It's a little. Yeah, it's okay. Do you, you have to look over a little bit? Or? A, I, I raised it up probably about a three quarters of an inch already, trying to get it right. Yeah. Jeez, dude! What a crazy cool concept <laughs> to do with this car. How funny, man! Yeah, it's I mean, and I got to imagine, like, if this wasn't your dad's car, you probably would have never gone and bought yeah, one of these. Huh? Spend all this money on it? No way. Yeah. Because it's my dad's, I'll never sell it. I might as well make it badass, right? Right, because you're yeah. never going to sell it. Yeah. You're never even thinking about the cost necessarily. Right. You know, I'm always curious with guys like you that have driven just so many different kinds of vehicles. Yeah. Do you have a favorite car or do you have a lot of favorite cars? Uh, I mean, I have multiple favorites depending on, you know, when what you're, you're yeah. Sports cars, which do you, like, yeah, for like stuff. a street driving sports car. Yeah, I mean, if you want, I have a new uh, Ferrari SF90. I have one of those. I thought the you had one, one of those. Yeah. I actually sold it, and I just got another one. It's going to be here next week, a brand new one. Jeez. Yeah. So the the new Ferraris the, or those McLarens, those two in the corner, those 765s, five, unbelievable. They're uh, truly unbelievable. It's amazing how fast they are. Really? Yeah. Are you? Oh shit, you just broke him completely loose. <laughs> yeah. Well, you got, what'd you say, 245s two on you? Oh my god, that's so take stupid, much. dude. <laughs> Sean was telling me earlier that these tires have been on this car for quite Not some for time. Years. I mean, they're older, but because it's never been in climate, they never dried or anything. They're just so still they're really still soft, good. They're yeah. just small. But yeah, I mean, I'm going to replace them. It's just kind of like until I get the proper wheels and tires, I'm not going to buy tires for this and then. You know, Why would buy you? new ones? You know, Why then, would you? Yeah. Makes no sense at yeah. all, dude. It's funny sitting in here, and I guess because the because you're sitting down lower, yeah. the chop top doesn't, doesn't occur that way. Well, when it when it had the original height seats, it in must it, you're have like, been right up, up here. against here, huh? Because they didn't lower the floor when they did the roof; they just lowered the roof. So funny, man. Yeah.
fun car you've built, dude. It's kind of cool, and it's and it's easy too, which is nice. You know, there's no yeah. real drama. I've been I got to get the suspension a little more dialed, but uh, yeah, I'll get get some tires underneath it. We'll keep making it better, but yeah, sure, sure. That is that LT4 friggin' motor, <laughs> man. Do you know what the weight of this car is by chance? It's probably 3,200 pounds. They're not, That's it's not super it, huh? heavy. It's a pretty small car. I didn't know it was that light. Passenger seat with yeah. somebody that's you, you know, years and years of being a pro driver. I literally f feel like I turn into a <laughs> five year old on a roller coaster. Like, yeah, like oh, yeah. Hang on. We'll try for maybe we'll try from a stop and see how it is. Okay, okay. Just to see if it'll do a burnout. <laughs> If you, you're all the way out on the clutch, but there's something, we got the clutch shimmed wrong or something, because it, it's, it's, it's engaging, but it's got a little slip to it. Got it. And then that's what that little smell is. It's not quite fully locked. Got it. You know, so it's, it's it. locked enough to get the tire spinning, but when it starts to gain some grip, then it starts to, the clutch starts to slip. It's all part of getting these things sorted, you know? It really, you know, it's funny, this this realm of the custom car stuff, yeah. it makes me appreciate the difference between a builder and an engineer. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm sure you had to experience I mean, in racing. You had engineers yeah. on your team. Well, part of being successful in racing is being able to tell the team, you know, what you're feeling, what needs to be different. Like, hey, it's got a little understeer. We need a little less sway bar. Or, hey, we need a little less compression in the front yeah. shocks. Or we need a little more rebound in the back. Or yeah. the more the driver can tell the engineers, the better, the faster you'll go, and the better you'll look as a driver. Right. Right. So, Rather than the guy that goes, I don't know, something feels weird. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Like, there's a lot the fuck of do you these mean young by drivers that? that are really talented can go fast when it's right, but they don't know how to make the car right. They can't tell the so engineer do, what's yeah, not working. Yeah. So when properly. it's in that sweet spot, it's okay. But if if you know something happens or whatever, you know they don't know how to adjust. Yeah. Well, what a total blast getting to shoot with Eric again. I mean, this is a guy, you gotta realize, ascended to the highest levels of motorsports. I mean, this guy won in the LMP1 class, DPI in America, but absolutely mind-boggling driver. But what a blast. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Obviously very different for us, but amazing. So as always, you guys, thanks for hanging and watching what we do here. I really genuinely appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next episode. All right, man, later.